What's going on everybody and welcome to part two of our poking around with neural networks tutorial series. In this tutorial what we're going to do is kind of build on the last one. So the last one we had this input data that was uh, basically you know sh a Shakespeare play and we got it we got the neural network to produce something that looked very just like this basically uh, and then we wondered could we do this with Python code. So that's what we're going to try in this tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is in the data directory, we're going to make a new one. So there's tiny Shakespeare here. Let's go ahead and make a new one. And I'm going to call this one uh, PyCode. And then inside PyCode, I'm going to add a new file. And I'm going to call that, um, I don't know, standard lib compile. And then I'm going to make that .py. Yes. And then let's open it with Sublime. So first of all, we need to basically what we're going to do to get you know to get our sample data, we have to use uh, we have to have some sample code. And so I think probably what better place to get that sample code than from the standard library. So depending on your operating system and where you've installed Python, this could all be different. But if you just do like import sys, and then we just do sys. Uh, let's do print uh, sys.path. If we run that, we can see uh, basically all the places where um, Python believes your path to be. And all you're really looking for is your, 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 your lib path. So, so in my case, it's C Python 36 slash lib. And in there, in there is my standard library. Um, so site packages is where third party libraries go, but in this one right here, that's where like things like, you know, time and all that are, are, are stored in sys, for example. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull this back down. So we're going to grab code from our lib directory. Now, the way that we're going to do that is let's just start over. We're going to import OS standard lib location. And in my case, again, that was right here. So I'm just going to copy paste. And if you're on Windows, just make sure you double backslash there. And let's make sure we don't have that extra quote. And then we can specify uh, just to keep the size decent. You could say how many maximum files you want. In my case, I'm just going to say a thousand um, or actually you might want to say a hundred. That would probably produce something close to what we're looking for. Um, but we'll see. So now why are you mad at me for this? Oh. <laughs> now what we want to do is we're just going to count. We'll have a simple counter here. And then what we're going to say is with open. Uh, and then we'll do the input.txt with the attention to append it. And with uh, the encoding as UTF-8. Uh, so with open that as F, what do we want to do? Uh, what we're going to do is for path and directories, um, actually path directories files in os.walk. And then we want to walk through this, the standard lib location. So basically it's going to give us the path, all of the plausible other directories, and then the actual files in there. And that's basically what os.walk does. It's just going to let you you know, recursively iterate basically through every option that we possibly have. So once we do that, we're going to just say for file in files, uh, we're going to say count plus equals one. And let me just zoom out a little bit. I don't need to be that zoomed in. So for file in files, we'll count plus equals one. If that count is uh, greater than our max files, let's just go ahead and break out of this. L if uh, we're going to use dot pi in file, let's do a try except exception as e full print string e there. And what we're going to try is with open os.path.join, uh, we're going to join the path and the specific file. Um, so path is just the path all the way to that file. And then you just have that actual file name itself. So uh, we're going to join the path and the file. And we want to open that with the intention just to read it as data f. And we're going to say contents equals data f dot read. 
And then we've got that. So now we're going to input f, uh, which was, uh, yeah, we're going to input f dot write our contents. And actually, we probably should call this input f as well. Or we could call this f. Yeah. OK, we'll just do f dot write contents. And then we'll f dot write. And we'll just throw in a new line. OK, so what that's going to do is hopefully produce us a an input file. So let's go ahead and just run it real quick and see what happens. That's fine. So at least one of them didn't work. But our input now is clearly a bunch of Python code very well. So now what we can do is attempt to train on, uh, on this data. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, come back to our train.py file. And basically, all we want to do here is we're just going to change like one thing. So we'll come back to this main directory here, uh, train.py. We'll open the command prompt. And then basically, we're just going to say Python train.py. And then instead of um, basically the data dir needs to change. So data dir equals, and in this case, it's data slash pi code. So the data dir just is whatever contains um, your input.txt. So for us, that's data slash pi code. So let's go ahead and run this one now. Maybe. Did I not hit enter? <laughs> I just want to make sure it works. And then I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll just pause it while it trains. Yeah. So I'm going to pause it now while that's training. And then we'll pick back up. I'm not sure I'm going to do all 50,000 epo or 50,000 steps, rather. Um, we might pause it a little earlier than that, but we'll see. All right, so we're at about 35,000 steps. Here is uh, the current training. So the blue one is uh, the model that we're training right now. So interestingly enough, the loss went significantly low, uh, lower than the other one, which is I'm not really sure what why why that would be because we use the same parameters, just different data. Anyway, um, interesting. So maybe it's an easier to learn problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this hit 36,000, then I'm going to stop it, and then we're going to sample. Wait for it. Okay, so that's saved. So I'm going to cut it. And then now, let's just do uh, python sample.py. Uh, and then let's do n equals 1,000. And let's see what we've got. Wait for it. Cool. Okay, so first of all, this is a little hard for us to read just in the console like this. Uh, so one option we have is to just output it, but uh, at least right now, I mean, it looks pretty good. Um, but what we could do is we could just give it an out. So uh, let's do 2,500, and then let's just do it to out.txt. Actually, we should have done out.py. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do out.py. Let's just, I kind of want to stop it. Just do, <laughs> uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> let's just do, I'm just going to change it to out.py. And now, while that's running, let me open up our, let's see, where are we? Pi code. Here. And then here. And we should have it out. Yeah, there we go. So now let's open that in uh, Sublime. And cool. So... Uh, we have some quote issues here. I might almost kind of want to like redo it. So if you like, for example, I bet if we fix, let's zoom out real quick. Um, so like somewhere the quote didn't get closed. <laughs> like, let me, let's just do, let's delete this. No, that still doesn't want to do it. Hmm. Let me redo it. Let's just redo to out.py. That one looks really messy. I've seen it do much, much, much better than that. Obviously, it's not going to get syntax perfect. Also, our sequence length was only 50. So we probably would want to make that a little larger. And we'd have a little bit more success. Uh, having only 50 is kind of a problem. This looks a little better. It looks like it never closed off its, uh, 
it's a doc string though which again if part of the problem is we our sequence length probably isn't long enough I mean we can see that at least you know it started to figure stuff out uh, it looks like it thinks it's in some sort of class also these extra lines are kind of confusing um, <clears throat> I think the problem is if we we probably are having new line in return so what I would do from here is uh, let's see I think we should change hmm, I want us to get rid of uh, So maybe what we can do, like let's, we can just edit, let's edit sample.py. And then here we print data.decode utf8. Let's also, let's just do with open. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. <laughs> and in fact, let me just bring this easier for me to do this in uh, Sublime. So let's just bring this up in Sublime. All right, so here, print data.decode, that's fine, with open out.py uh, with the intention to write as f, f.write, uh, and we want to write uh, basically data.decode utf8, and then we're going to do a dot replace, and it looks like we have a situation where, is this not closed off? cool where rather than just a new line we have this like return new line uh, so we're going to replace all instances of return new line with just straight up a new line so we f dot write that and that should be good so now we'll save that let's come back to where we were sampling and then we don't want to out to out we'll just out to the well, the, the script now does it for us. Hopefully we don't have any errors. If we don't, uh, we'll see. Let me just move this aside. Let's come over here. It should rewrite this file for us. We'll see if it does that. Uh, it also printed out for us. Please tell me. Yes, it did rewrite it for us. Um, I, part of me thinks that we should just do like a longer one. But anyway, I think we're going to have a lot of issues with, like, I wonder why. <laughs> Unexpected indent and stuff. Really? Why is that an unexpected indent? I feel like that's valid indent. Am I just, I must just be stupid or something. I guess because this is not a, like this is an error. So like, I wonder if I did this. Oh, and then this needs to be probably closed off. And then suddenly it goes away. Okay. That's weird that that would call that an unexpected indent, but I guess it's because this wasn't fully done. Anyway, we can see that this is looking it's clear that it's Python code, uh, but the problem is it's uh, it's really really messy, <laughs> and um, and I and, and then we obviously we have a lot of instances where we've got like these doc strings that never close off, and the reason for that is it's 50 characters is over really quick, and so I think it very quickly forgets uh, that it was ever in a doc string to begin with. So my line of thinking here is that we'd actually want to train with a sequence length that is much longer than the, the stock 50. So, uh, so what I would suggest we do is go to uh, the training and instead uh, do a much longer sequence length. Now, depending on your GPU, you may or may not be capable of doing this, um, but the following is the command that um, I've already run, so I'm not going to rerun it, uh, but it was this, python train.py. Uh, I changed the size of the network. I actually don't think that that helps much in this case. I, I didn't notice that it necessarily helps. The real thing that seems to be helping is sequence length, <laughs> okay? So I actually already trained this model. If you want this model, I trained it for 97,000 steps, um, which is a lot at a sequence length of 250. Um, and I just trained it basically overnight. And here's just like a little snippet. I'm just going to copy and paste it. But again, I, I, I have hosted this model. So it's on Python programming net. It's in the text-based version of this tutorial. Just go down to the bottom um, and the model is there for you. So if you want to see it, play with it, train it further, whatever, awesome. 
but this is the result and uh, or at least a sample so as you can see it actually could figure out oh I'm still in a doc string and finish the doc string interestingly enough this looks like more than 250 characters um, and, and maybe it was able to figure out oh I need to close it because of like returns and then it like realized okay I'm done with the doc string and then closed it because I'm that looks like more than 250 anyway um, this looks really good <laughs> I mean like Obviously, there's some errors here, but, uh, you know, that's clearly Python. Like, to me, I just think this is super cool because uh, because it, it's definitely learned so many things. Like, even just here, um, you can tell, first of all, it knows it's a built-in method with this underscore here. And I'm sure, you know, somewhere, at least it thinks it's a method, so it's self. And it's passing all these things. And this, the doc string, I just think, is hilarious that it... That it <laughs> <laughs> it learns doc strings. Um, it knows about, like I said, like clearly about like the self and stuff like that. And then you, you've got, unfortunately, you've got some things that are being passed to this method and not being used, <laughs> which is funny. Um, and then here, like things are being used that weren't passed. But what we what we do have is, first of all, it's honoring. Is it honoring Pep8 there too? <laughs> I think it is. Let's see. Is this uh yeah, so this is mad because this is too long, but you can see here it's actually put the parameters on a new line uh because it was going to violate pep8 probably. Anyway, that's funny. Um but it learned all kinds of things like define, then it's a name, parentheses, oftentimes that first parameter if it's a method is going to be self and then colon new line and then it learned all of the white space. Like just the fact that it learned white space is pretty cool. Also, it learned spaces, not tabs. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see what else if we notice, like it, it clearly learned like, you know, if statements, stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And it also seems to have learned that like if is generally has some sort of conditional and it clearly picked up conditionals, um, which again is, is really interesting to me. Um, and then, yeah, lots of little stuff like, like the doc strings. That's awesome. And then like the comments and stuff like, anyway, I think that's really cool. Um, and obviously in this case, you know, business wise, you know, I, I try to, uh, think about like, how can we actually use this kind of stuff? And I mean, immediately I can see like, uh, you could probably make a pretty cool IDE with this. Like if, if it learns, um, you know, as you type, it's kind of like, you know, like T9 text or something or not T9, uh, <laughs> where like predict when you text and it like predicts your next words for you and stuff like that. A lot of times those are pretty good. In general, those are like Markov chains uh, that generate that. It'd be, I'd be curious to know which is a little more accurate, a Markov chain or uh, a generative model like this. Anyway, it'd be cool to have an IDE that just kind of helps you as you code, uh, and it, it, it would be able to predict the next things that you're trying to do. Um, I'm pretty sure you could do something like that with this. Anyway, um, I think that's all for now. Um, what I'm planning to do with this series is kind of touch on a lot of things, and then we'll probably end up coming back to a lot of the things that we touch on. So I'm not necessarily totally done with playing around with generating code or just Python code. Uh, but the next thing I want to go, go to is uh, doing things with the MNIST data set. So I'd, what I'd like to do is try both classification as well as generation with the MNIST data set and see what we can kind of figure out. So, so far what we've been doing is using a generative model, how it was kind of made to be used. And now what I'd like to do is actually use a generative model in ways that it wasn't necessarily intended to be used. Um, and the reason why I want to do this is just to show you that the generative model is capable of doing other things. It's literally any variable input to any variable output, which is really interesting to me. Obviously, we have something similar with the sequence to sequence in TensorFlow, uh, which is any sequence to any sequence, which is also really fascinating to me. Um, and you can almost bet you're going to see that in this series as well, so don't worry. Um, anyways, that's all for now. If you like the content, you can support it, uh, pythonprogramming.net slash support questions comments leave them below if you want to chat with us there's a link to the discord in the description otherwise i will see you in another tutorial